Ähm, let's go for this, uh, this super uh, live. First of all, um, I'm really happy to, uh, to open this, uh, this session of live. Uh, I hope you're safe, I hope you're good. I'm a little bit sick, so um, I may cough a little bit. I'm so sorry for that. And um, well, um, first of all, um, I want to show you uh, how to get Gary a render. So um, you can go to uh, directly to uh, GaryRender.com and uh, you just need to uh, enter your um, uh, email address and um, you, you get a free license uh, per person, uh, per IP address. Uh, it's including a commercial license. So it's free to use if you are indie. There is no uh, indie version. There is only one version for a student. Also, there is one version. And um, you can go for, uh, for uh, uh, sending you uh, your email and getting back uh, some download links. It depends if you're Windows or Linux. And uh, if you're on Linux, uh, you just need to, uh, if you're on Windows, uh, just to watch out uh, for the uh, Hyper-V uh, settings of your uh, Windows because it can detect that you are a virtual machine, so that can be an issue. Uh, but that's the only thing you need to, uh, to know about uh, starting a Gera render. You need to be connected on the internet, download, and play. So let's have fun with this uh, first, uh, first version. Um, first of all, um, I'm gonna, um, I want to introduce you to uh, Gera render. So uh, we're going to see what's Gera, uh, what is assembly, uh, our first steps in Gera. And uh, I guess later in the next part, uh, we're going to see what is an override, what is uh, how we can shade uh, more deeply into the uh, shading system, our lighting system and the rendering system. But I guess for this session, we're going to stop by for the first steps. So what's Gerea? Uh, Gerea is a render engine. Um, it's also a lighting tool. It's also an assembly tool. And most recently, it's a procedural system. And um, what are the feature themes that have been released with Gerea recent, not recently? Uh, in the press, there is a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, main uh, feature themes that have been rendered with it. And uh, most recently, uh, there is a couple of uh, long features that maybe you have seen. Uh, Minuscule, Playmobil, uh, Robozuna has been on Netflix, uh, Le Mans, uh, Ford vs. Ferrari, and uh, Dronix, uh, the most recent one. Um, and um, I'm really happy to have been working to this uh, two uh, animation uh, feature movie uh, and practicing area. Um, uh, recently, we have also a really famous uh, um, a video clip that's been released by our friend of uh, Fortish uh, about uh, League of Legends, so I'm not gonna uh, bother you with that. Um, there is a couple of schools who are already uh, working with, uh, with Gary Render, and uh, we are to super of them, it's starting in 2015 with his art. And there is a lot of wonderful uh, movies that have been uh, released from our lovely students uh, recently. And um, so we're going to start with the assembly part because that's something that's not uh, super uh, simple for you guys that may be not really um, into assembly tool. So um, in the classic pipeline, classic uh, way of working, we most of the time working with uh, modeling, shading, ring, anim, and lighting. They are all connecting to each other. But um, what we want um, to be more efficient uh, in a pipeline, we want to divide the task and um, uh, work, look development and uh, animation separately. And after that, assemble everything to get one lighting uh, scene to start working with. So um, we are going to use cache most of the time. So um, what is the interest of uh, using cache? It's uh, data moving from a task to another, or from a department to another. And um, it can go from modding to UVs, or um, it can go to animation to lighting. We can use cache for going to part to another one. It's only geo, so somehow that's only uh, position and normal per frame. That's it. 
what we bake and what we use cash, it's because we want to break the data flow. Uh, we don't want to get everything that's going to be dynamic. We want to control everything. It's going to be simpler for a lot of reasons. It's going to be easier for the uh, uh, lighting department to don't have um, any rigs or any um, controllers that coming from the animation. And um, it's going to give, uh, it's going to simplify the data all the way of the pipeline. Um, in production, assembly can be really tricky because it looks like that. <coughs> and um, assembly can be uh, super complex because that's maybe the first time that you're going to see all the part of your um, shot. Because of the first time that you're going to get all the FX and animation that have been uh, create a part. And that's uh, the first time that you're going to get the look development into your scene. And it's going to be the first time you're going to get your set and maybe your preset of light. So assembly, it's, it's a tricky part in a pipeline of, uh, of a movie. And uh, most of the time, we're going to use for assembly a couple of uh, cache systems that already been used in open sources. Um, so uh, Alambic is a standard one and uh, for the uh, basic geometry. And there is also um, OpenVDB, which is a standard one for the um, fluids and um, dynamic um, fluids cache, mostly coming from Houdini. And uh, <clears throat> there is the USD that's uh, a brand new open source cache, which is uh, not already totally uh, production useful right now, but it's going to start, I guess it's going to be in this year, it's going to be really used. And um, I'm saying that there is uh, Python, but Python is not a cache. Python is a, a way of getting glue into your pipeline. But you can use, uh, also you can inject Python into uh, your Garia to play with it. <clears throat> We can play with uh, exotic cache. Uh, you can get uh, Fumifix cache, Yeti cache, XGen, and Air. Uh, there is Partio, so you can um, uh, use uh, BGO cache with Partio. And of course, you can use your uh, wonderful uh, crowd system that's uh, Golem. Um, Guerrilla is not the only software in the world, I know, and um, uh, other studios are using the same solution. Um, there is um, uh, Samba, uh, which is using uh, MacGuff uh, right now. There is an uh, older one that's not useful, used right now. Um, there is the major one known is uh, Katana, uh, most of you guys. Um, and there is a couple of other ones, and Guerrilla, it's, it's one being used right now, uh, and ours, and it's wonderful. So. Uh, what we can do with Guerrilla? Um, we can't animate, we can't model, we can rig, we can paint. But what we can do, we can light, we can render, we can composite, we can look develop, we can move, we can instantiate, and we can f uh, create fur. Um, that's, that's already a lot of stuff that we can do. Um, so first steps. Let's go into an MP scene of Gloria. I prepared already a couple of things. So um, as you can see, I get my uh, keyboard that's going to be pressed right there. So um, it's going to be useful for you guys to know the uh, shortcuts. So first of all, it's a uh, recall from the uh, basic 3D softwares. Um, you can use Alt click to orbit. You can use Alt uh, right click to approach. And you can use Alt middle click to use the translate uh, X, uh, Y. Um, so I'm going to open uh, one sample that's going to be useful to play with. Uh, this one, I really like it. So I can play with my scene, as you can see, and I'm going to trigger render. How to trigger render is really simple. I just have to press the button right there. That's render image. As you can see, it's a control plus R short key. OK, let's trigger render and here it is. So that's my image. This is my render view. So there is a couple of, uh, of tools I can use. I can save my image. I can scale. I can feed the image. I can have a look at the RGB channels. Uh, I can have a look at my alpha, but in my case, I don't have any alpha. I can switch a couple of settings. I'm going to uh, have a look uh, f uh, later. I can change my uh, view uh, color space. Um, and the tool that's uh, is going to be the tool that we're going to use most of the time is going to be the render graph. The render graph uh, right there, it's a nodal system that's driving the uh, assignation and uh, attributes that we're going to give to our to our tools, to our um, assets. So this is my view of my nodal system. I can pick uh, one shader and uh, have a look into what happened into it. 
and it's gonna be f we're gonna dive into it a lot and um, I've got my uh, passes uh, so I've got my done list with recluse from an outliner with describing all the information I've got in my document and um, there is also uh, a passes uh, view that's gonna drive my uh, render settings so I'm gonna pick my render pass which is really close from you guys who know Maya which is kind of close of a render layer but that kind of different so that's why it's not really a render layer it's more that's different but basically we're gonna say that's close from render layer and this is my settings of rendering right now so Gary it's a pass tracing uh, renderer um, so that's why it's, it's super simple to set up it's brute force so I just have to set up a couple of settings it's gonna render with physical uh, settings so let's have a look to how to import data um, I'm gonna uh, create a new um, scene I'm gonna pick some elements so what I've got in my bags um, mm, let's play with my new baby um, that's an asset I'm uh, working with right now in my uh, personal project uh, it's a pretty big asset it's big by the uh, amount of uh, element in it but not really big in scale as you can see um, so what I use I use F to fit my view um, I was like that and I select an element into it so I've got a lot of elements into it and I press F to select and zoom in so this is my asset um, I'm gonna set up a really simple uh, system I'm gonna use a render graph right there I'm gonna use the basic render graph and I'm gonna add a new light um, how I can create a new light I'm gonna press control space and I'm gonna create a skylight skylight is a basic sun and sky system I'm gonna connect it and as you can see uh, it appears some elements so what is a skylight in fact it's just uh, an environment and a direction light was gonna uh, play like sky and sun and I'm gonna trigger a render yeah here comes a beast so um, this is my uh, as you can see tricks the render with the basing settings what happened it's um, in fact my asset uh, I'm gonna pick one shape and uh, as you can see my asset is going through my pipes so what happens um, every object in Garea uh, got a couple of tags and one basic the most basic one it's all all is a basic tag that uh, affect all object in the scene so I'm just saying that all object in my scene at using or using the uh, surface shader this is a standard surface shader and uh, being light also by the skylight and it's going to be output my uh, direct um, it's going to be output my uh, layer information and that's the one I'm I'm going to look at so okay um, I want to change some things uh, I want to say that this part is going to turn into a metal so um, I've got a couple of solutions for saying that uh, the most simplest one it's to pick the element directly in the view so I can click there or um, I can click there also in the render view that's the same stuff and I'm gonna drag and drop my element into my render graph so right now what he said it's just my element is going into the pipe is not got no any change so um, I'm gonna change some element in it um, I'm gonna call a preset of metal which is just um, a preset of the surface shader that we used previously but there is already a good setting for get uh, a nice decent uh, metal uh, look and I'm gonna press render and as you can see my object my part of my turret of my tank is gonna turn into a metal so what happened in fact it's um, if I pick a, a normal uh, another element it's going just going through all this pipe without being connecting to the metal settings but this one is gonna go through a different way of getting my um, uh, of getting a surface shader and that's why it's affecting by my metal so really simply it's uh, just have to add elements to this pack uh, I'm just saying oh this one is gonna be also metal okay and as you can see it's gonna turn also into metal so that's basically how we can uh, 
assign some attributes into uh, my um, render graph. I can also pick this one, as you can see, it's not that smooth. So I'm gonna add an attribute. Uh, what are attributes not? Uh, they are a basic not to uh, edit the uh, attributes of a shape. So I'm gonna say that this one is gonna be subdivided by three and it's gonna be smooth. And as you can see, my gun is gonna be smooth. Okay, so we can go further, say I'm gonna pick these plates, I'm gonna connect them like that. I'm gonna create a glass shader, a preset, and I'm gonna uh, for them to render a glass. Okay, perfect. So as you can see there, they get some transparency. Well, in fact, refraction. So this is basically how we can play our really quickly and affect um, shader to Giria and edit them. Uh, it's gonna be the same stuff for lights. Um, okay, so I'm gonna uh, cut my light. So first of all, I'm gonna switch it off, but not really switch it off like uh, I'm not gonna destroy it uh, because Giria is non-destructive system. I'm just gonna have to bypass this node. And as you can see, it's gonna be turning dark because there is no light anymore. So I'm gonna create a quick light. It's gonna be a squirrel light. No point, I know. And um, this squirrel light um, is gonna be my new light in my scene, but I need to place it because as you can see, my squirrel light is in the middle of the environment. So um, this squirrel light uh, right now, it's a procedural element and um, uh, it doesn't really exist in my document already because it just generates on the fly. So I'm gonna change my view and I'm gonna go to a new way of thing, my scene graph. This is the uh, live setup, this is a live graph. And as you can see, all my elements are uh, evaluating that the way that they are cre created procedurally. And I'm gonna drag and drop my light, but I can also have the list of all the light um, be able to look through. I'm just pressing the L shortcut and I'm gonna be able to see through my squirrel light. So that's a different way of uh, look through the camera. I'm gonna go back to my perspective and I'm gonna drag and drop also. So yeah, I'm going back to my light, sorry. No, it's not camera. So I'm gonna press render and it's working. So that's how it's worked to just create a, a squirrel light. If I don't wanna switch off, I can easily uh, switch it off like this. So as my view is linked to my camera, that's why I go back to the centers. And as you can see, I've got my elements. So I'm gonna switch it on, okay. And the light is working. Of course, uh, my middle part is gonna turn black because I've got no environment. So yeah, that's the uh, property of, uh, of metals. Um, okay, that's, that's a pretty uh, good first steps to the render graph and how we can play really quickly with light and shaders and attributes. Uh, what I will show you uh, just before ending this uh, first step and first part of Garia is gonna be uh, how we can set up the, uh, the um, output of my images. So I'm gonna go to the uh, passes um, menu. I'm gonna select my render pass and uh, I'm gonna change some settings. So I wanna increase the quality. Increasing the quality of Garia is pretty simple. Basically just increasing the number of samples. Right now I've got 16 samples. If I go to 64, I get a better quality render. Oh cool, of course, it's gonna take more time. Ah, yeah, good. There is not touching the free range. So I wanna uh, set up my uh, exit uh, system. So I can change uh, from a uh, different uh, output file. I can set up the uh, OpenOXR. Um, we got um, a special uh, homemade cook uh, OpenOXR with uh, a special uh, ID cache, uh, ID, which is called uh, OpenOXR ID, it's so open source. Um, I will do a live about that because that's really a wonderful tool. But right now I'm gonna stick to my OpenOXR classical um, right there. And I'm gonna uh, have a look at where my file is gonna be exiting. So I'm gonna save the scene into a folder that's gave for something super simple. Let's say, okay, uh, create a live folder. I'm gonna save my scene. Thing cute, because it's so cute thing. Okay, I'll save my scene. And um, as you can see, my scene has been saved. And um, if I'm creating some render, it's gonna save my data into my right folder of life. So um, let's say that we're gonna render an image. Oh, well, we're gonna go first. Uh, 
smaller amount of uh, of samples. Okay, so here is my scene, my project in H live, and I've got my whip uh, information. So all, all the data I render in my viewer are going to be stored in this. Um, if you trick a batch, you can go there and trick a batch, but it's going to be a uh, more uh, focused part uh, into uh, what we're going to see later. Um, this is the basic stuff for going to A to Z to Geria, like importing an asset. Uh, just changing some elements in the render graph, assigning some attributes and render and grab the uh, render that we uh, uh, render. Uh, what I will show you guys before uh, uh, the ending of this uh, live is going to be the other part that in Gary that we uh, uh, so we light, we shade, uh, but there is some a super interesting part that we can do in Geria. Already uh, opened some scene that have been rendered uh, from my students. Uh, former students of uh, Isar Digital, uh, they create a super nice um, uh, movie that's been called Mice. Uh, it's a spoof of the uh, logo of the ring and uh, good uh, have a look at this movie. It's really, really a nice, a nice movie. Uh, what I love in their movie, it's uh, they work so really well that uh, they use uh, really powerful uh, tools in Guerrilla. Um, in this uh, asset, they don't use any grooming system. All the fur was made procedurally. So as you can see, there is no no guides at all. It just drawing by a couple of maps that have been uh, uh, set up there and a couple of procedurals have uh, been uh, creating area. And that's how they can execute this uh, super nice uh, grooming system and super simple uh, system that is gonna be, it was really really a sober system. So with Geria you can easily create some simple uh, first system like this one, and I find it really really nice. Um, you can also create uh, procedurally some other system. That's also part of uh, mice uh, the movie that I've uh, I've uh, I've got uh, used to uh, create uh, instances of instances. So. In this uh, example, uh, as you can see, I've got uh, I've got instantiates uh, on a point cloud from Udini a uh, couple of uh, stones, and after that, on all the stones, I've instantiated some cigarettes bots into it. Uh, let's have a look directly into the uh, ray tracing mode uh, that I can use directly into the viewport and. As you can see, I've got all the bots of cigarettes that have been instantiated of my object. Um, right there. And it's going to save you a lot of memory to uh, use this kind of system that have been uh, embedding some procedurals into procedurals. It's going to save you a lot of time. So that's something that is going to be more complex to do in Gary, but that's something that we can easily do importing some basic stuff from Houdini and instantiate a lot of tiny stuff into it and saving a lot of time for getting really rich environment or uh, rich um, uh, tiny uh, details into your images. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, apparently there was no that much question um, for this uh, live, so I'm gonna stop right there. And it was a pleasure to uh, you guys um, introduce you to Garia. Bye.